An economic crisis is looming, and experts are sounding the alarm, afraid of a self-imposed calamity. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is talking about the dispute over raising the debt ceiling, which hasn't happened yet. Can't be negotiated over whether or not we're going to pay our bills. But as the countdown to potential calamity ticks closer to zero, the U.S. Treasury is buying America more time by taking so-called extraordinary measures. Because if the government hits its borrowing limit, you have a real mess on your hands. So what are these extraordinary measures? How do they help avoid a crisis? And what happens when they run out? First, it's important to understand what makes them extraordinary. The Treasury pays the country's bills by using revenue from taxes. Because it spends more than it taxes, it makes up the difference by issuing debt in the form of government securities. But there is a self-imposed congressional limit to how much of this debt the department can issue. That's the ceiling. The only way to fund a deficit is to borrow more money. And until it gets rid of the deficit, that debt is going to keep rising. It's on Congress to raise that ceiling to allow the Treasury to issue more debt and cover spending that lawmakers already approved. But there's a cap on how much debt the department can issue. That limit? The debt ceiling. The debt ceiling. The debt ceiling. If all of a sudden overnight you can't borrow any more money, well, then you start missing payments that you've promised. This is where the Treasury comes in with its extraordinary measures to prevent the country from reaching the debt ceiling. The Treasury uses these extraordinary measures because it's got no alternative. If it can't borrow more money, it's got to find the money somewhere. So the Treasury accesses other funds it has tucked away, pulling money from one area to use for more pressing spending needs in another. Imagine that uh, you have an envelope hidden away in a drawer with a bunch of cash in it to deal with a crisis. This is the envelope. But how does the Treasury get that cash? One way is by using money it has stowed away for its own retirees. On January 19th, Yellen announced the Treasury would be redeeming investments from the Civil Service Retirement and Disability Fund and the Postal Service Retiree Health Benefits Fund. They are one of the tools in the envelope. Pulling investments doesn't shut down these funds or mean that retirees won't get their payments. It does mean that these funds will be tapped now while extraordinary measures continue. Another way is by pausing investments. On January 23rd, Yellen paused investments in the Government Securities Investment Fund, which is invested in short-term U.S. Treasury securities. In addition, the Treasury can pause payments to government funds that don't have to immediately pay beneficiaries. But the Treasury doesn't just take and pause without refilling the envelope. Typically, after the debt ceiling is increased, they'll borrow money from the public, from bond investors, and then replenish those pension accounts that it's taken from. However, the Treasury's extraordinary measures are temporary, meant only to tide the government over until the debt ceiling is raised. At the end of the day, Congress simply has to act to raise the debt ceiling. House Republicans, on the other hand, want to use the debt ceiling as leverage to force a debate with Democrats about cutting spending to curb future debt. It doesn't matter if you sit before a four-star general. They'll tell you the debt is the greatest threat to this nation. This has become something of a recurring political fight. Let's pay our bills, not torch our economy. In the past, they've always raised the debt ceiling and tried to get back to some state of normalcy. If they run out of funds uh, in using these extraordinary measures and they haven't run the debt ceiling, then they don't pay their bills. Yellen said that she expected them to keep the government from hitting the debt ceiling until early June. If the ceiling isn't raised and the Treasury can't meet all of its obligations, the U.S. defaults. It's called the X date, and it's never happened in American history. So what would happen? Bondholders don't get paid interest. Retirees don't get paid uh, Social Security funds. Contractors don't get paid for military spending. And then you've got a real mess on your hands. That mess could cause a disaster in financial markets. It is possible for markets to become quite concerned um, about whether or not the U.S. will pay its bills uh, before the day of reckoning comes. That could even mean a possible credit downgrade. One of the last times we had a moment like this was Standard & Poor's downgraded the AAA credit rating on U.S. Treasury securities. After witnessing a month of wrangling over raising the debt ceiling, they doubted our political system's ability to act.
There are real consequences if we get to a moment where extraordinary measures are exhausted and the U.S. has no way to continue to fund its budget deficits. The Treasury says the U.S. won't reach the X date until this summer. In the meantime, the Treasury will continue implementing extraordinary measures until the debt ceiling is raised or that emergency envelope is empty.